Hi students! Welcome to another math lesson with Miss Hayes, where we explore numbers, adding, subtracting, data collection, all sorts of fun stuff. Today we're going to start with, start with, get to. Now we have all played this game before we started a number, we get to another number. But today we're going to count by tens instead of once. So we're going to start at, what's this number? 23, of course. We're going to start at 23 and where are we going to end up? At 83. So let's look at our number chart and let's see what it's going to look like to count by tens. So normally we count by tens over here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, we can keep going forever. But that, in case you didn't know, is not the only way you can count by tens. Counting by tens just means we're adding 10 more. If you add 10 to, 20, 10 to 10, you get 20. If you add 10 to 20, you get 30. So instead of starting over here, we're gonna start in the middle. We're gonna start at, what was that number again? We're going to start at 23 and we're going to count by 10. So I'm going to scoot close so we can really see our number pad here. So we're starting at 23. What's really cool is no matter where you start, the tens are going down. So whether we start at 23 or 30 or 20 or 25, we're going to go down to count by tens. So let's count by tens and go from 23 to 83. Ready? So let's see. Here it is. So 23, 33, 43, 53, 63, 73, 83. Oh, that's where we were supposed to stop. You're right. Totally heard your voice in my head telling me to stop right there. 83. So all that changed, remember last week we talked about tens and ones. Looking at these numbers, did the ones change? No, they're all three, 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 because we're not adding any ones. Remember when you add 10, here's the number 10, the ones place is a zero, so it's not gonna change. But we are adding one to the tens place. So look what happens to the tens. It goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like we're counting up. We're just counting up by 10 instead of by one. So that's really cool. You can count by 10 starting from any number on this chart. We could even close our eyes and pick a number. Well, we're gonna start at 25. Let's count by tens. 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105, 115. You can just keep going. So. That was really fun. Start with get two counting by tens instead of ones because, you know, we're almost second graders, so we can do that. All right, so today we're gonna talk more about data collecting, but let's remind ourselves of a couple of vocabulary words just in case we forgot. So the first one is survey. A survey is um, a way to collect information from people. So usually a survey is something you ask everybody for an answer. And that's one way you can collect data. Now, data is the other very important word for data collection. It's kind of in the name. Is a collection of facts or information. So when you ask people a question, their answer is the data, the facts and information. Now, last week, I asked all of the kids who came to my Zoom meetings, whether they wanted to be an eagle in the sky or whether they wanted to swim the oceans like a dolphin. So all of my students answered this question. Would you rather be an eagle or a dolphin? Now, when we collect all this data, that was my survey question, eagle or dolphin, and the data is everybody's answer. There's lots of ways that we can show data. So you know how we talk about how mathematicians have to draw and show their work? So when we're collecting data, we make charts. Let's look at our class data. So here's one kind of chart. It's like kind of like a table. It's a sideways T-chart. So do you see this T right here? 
Yeah, T-charts are real easy because you just draw a T this way or you can draw a T this way. So here's our information. And the reason we collect data is to learn something. So the different ways to show this will help us learn different things. So here's one chart and they all have the same information that I, that I gathered. Here's another kind of chart, a T chart going this way. And then here's another chart. This is a bar graph. So you can see eagle versus dolphin. And these are kind of cool because you can really see which one is more, right? But bar graphs are actually better when we talk to two classes. Let's look at two classes. So the blue is my class and the red is Mrs. Abbott's class from last year when she took this poll. And you can see that there were more kids in her class that wanted to be an eagle. And there were more kids in my class that wanted to be a dolphin. So bar graphs are really cool if you want to compare. We're really comparing two classes. And then there's something called a pie chart. And this one is not, we don't use this much in first grade. I just wanted to show it to you because pie charts are all about percent and you'll get to percent later. But what you can really see in this pie chart is which one was the favorite in our class. The dolphin, super easy to see that the dolphin was number one. So those are some examples, but we're gonna go back to I like this one, but I think I'm going to do this one because we really are looking at more. Which one had more and which one had less? So we can really see. So our first question is, what did we learn? There we go. What did we learn? Which one has more? Yeah, the dolphin clearly has more because here they're even, except the dolphin has a whole nother column over here and there's nothing on this side. So we can really see, we can even circle it. Let's circle it, let me get my marker. And we're gonna circle the more part. So see the more part? You could even look for what has less. So if the dolphin has more, what has less? The eagle, yeah, they're just opposites. And I can circle where there's less. See, there's a big missing, missing information right there is less. So we also learned that six people wanted to be an eagle. We also learned that 10 people wanted to be a dolphin. And the last important thing is to look at how many people answered this question. So even, doesn't matter what their answer was, whether they wanted to be an eagle, whether I want to be a dolphin. We just want to know how many kids answered my question. So I took the eagle, six, and the dolphin, 10, and I added it together. So 16 kids answered my question. And that's really important because the more people that answer your question, the better. So we had a small number of kids answer the question. Maybe we could ask some more. Maybe you could ask your parents, which one would they rather be? And then we'll get even more data. All right. So now, what does the data tell us? What does this chart tell us about dolphins and eagles, about our class? It tells us that more people want to swim in the ocean than fly in the sky. Um, it tells us that less people wanted to be an eagle than being a dolphin. And it tells us that only 16 people answered the question. And we know our class has 26 people. So we know that not everybody got to answer. So that's all the stuff that we learned just from this one little chart. Pretty cool, huh? So let's look at what this doesn't teach us. So charts are really great for information. They really are. But there are some things they don't teach us. For example, do we know why these kids chose Eagle? No, that information is not on here. Do we know why more people wanted the dolphin? That information isn't on here either. So when you look at a chart, some charts will give you a little information and some charts will give you a lot of information. This one's giving us a little bit of information. 
we know that there are four more people in our class who like dolphins than who like eagles. Pretty cool, huh? So that's our data collection for today. I really just wanted to show you some charts and get you kind of started on your data collection. Now that you've seen some charts, it's your turn to try it out. If you're in Google Classroom, you can try out the activity. If not, maybe you could collect all something from your house. Maybe you have lots of toy cars or lots of buttons or lots of marbles and you could put them in a chart by color or by size. Maybe you have lots of toys and some are really big and some are really small and you could make a chart out of big toys, small toys, right? That would be so cool. So either do the activity in Google Classroom or try it out on your own. Um, I, I can show you real quick if you're gonna try it out on your own, what you can do. So let's say you're gonna do big toys versus small toys. So you just write a T like this, like a big T. And then you would put big and you would put small. And then let's say you had four big toys. You could do X's, you could draw the toy, you could do a circle, you could do numbers. Let's do numbers. One, two, three, four. And let's say you had six small toys. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's how you can do it at home. Again, you don't have to use numbers. You can draw pictures or circles or X's, just like how all of our charts were a little different. This one had X's, um, this one had dots. You can do it the same way at home. So anytime you have a bunch of stuff or a bunch of people, if after all this is over, you have family come visit, you could ask them this question. Do you wanna be an eagle or a dolphin? And then you can make your own cool chart. So go out, collect data from your backyard, your room, your parents, ask questions, and have fun. I'll see you next time.